Okay, so this is a presentation to gear you up for your next assignment, which will be a collage, but we are also going to be talking about concept as well. So concept and collage. A collage is an assembled piece of art made by sticking or gluing various different materials such as photographs and pieces of paper or fabric or even of any flatter found materials onto a backing. And then for this case, for our collage, you'll just be using the stronger weighted Bristol paper that you have been working with. I already showed this, I believe, for um, an examination at uh, the way Wengechi Mutu, the artist of this piece, uses texture to control the composition of her piece. So you have seen this before, but um, just wanted to bring this back into the conversation as an example of collage. So uh, she uses found paper from or found images from magazines as well as um, actual fabrics, um, also like glitter and sequins, uh, her own human hair. Um, here's another one that she's done. She uses like an ink wash on paper and then she cuts that painted paper out, adds her other images from different types of beauty magazines and um, uses the X-Acto knife to carve out some really nice negative space within uh, the details of the hair, just to make it look a little bit more hair-like instead of super blocky. Um, so I know that, I believe I talked about, I do talk about concept as I show you all work um, in a lot of these presentations, but we're focusing a lot on concept um, today in this presentation. Concept, a concept is essentially uh, the message or the idea that a piece of art can convey. And um, some artists are even more conceptual, I guess, than others. Some people, I would say even some designers um, maybe work with just very direct color. I mean, the concept can be about anything. An artist can work from a concept. An artist can find the concept even after they make something. And also the concept or the idea or message can be something that the viewer draws out from the piece that maybe the artist didn't even know that they were doing. So the concept of Wengechi Mutu's piece, as I have talked about before, is um, Wengechi Mutu, in, her work is questioning the standards of conventional beauty. Um, her work has been called like Afrofuturist before. Um, she is a black woman who um, I think in this way cut like cuts from these beauty magazines and questions the uh, uh, standards, conventional standards of beauty. Um, and she creates these anthropomorphic types of female people, creatures, sort of like monster-ish um, imagery that comes from her imagination and her also her, her strong concept revolving around um, really questioning like what, what do, what is beautiful um, to, to, this, to the masses and to dissect that literally by cutting and pasting these images to, together. <clears throat> This is a, an older artist. Um, this is a really famous collage. This is by John Hartfield. He worked a lot with um, different types of war imagery. Um, and as you can see in this image, this collage, he took a picture of Adolf Hitler and used a photograph of coins and he made it into a spinal cord here. And then he kind of showed a belly full of coins or of money. And um, he, you, he cut this strap from the original image of Adolf Hitler and he saved it after he pasted these coins down. He put the strap back over, which I think is a really nice design touch. 
something that you can do within your collages is really consider um, how to use the most of the materials that you find by um, sort of interlacing or interweaving different parts of the papers that you find to, um, to really create a like some dimension within your work. So the concept around this by John Hartfeld is he was displaying Hitler as um, a as political alchemy or as a political political alchemist. Now, alchemist is um, a person who studied um, sort of like science and medicine through older terms of alchemy, which is a, this science before as we know it. Older science that kind of like is about like using potions and stuff like that. Um, so he displays Hitler as a political, political alchemy to expose how he converted financial contributions from more investors into nonsense to perpetuate the fascist state. So as you can see here, he's made up of money, he's eating it, he's all about that. Um, and it relates directly to what was happening at the time. Hannah Hawk is a very famous collage artist. Um, we have looked at, I think, I believe in this class, we looked at some of her work before and I just wanted to bring her up again. She was part of the Dada movement, which um, was exploring the follies of World War II. So around the same time as John Hartfield. And Hannah Hawk, she, she explored a lot about um, female domesticity and in this collage, you can see how she used um, an image from probably like a beauty magazine. This might be a famous person, I don't know. And also um, finding imagery from maybe a book or another magazine of like this, what looks like to be a part of an Egyptian head or statue. And, uh, I like how she uses like the negative space of the eye here, takes that out to reveal the eye of the black and white image of the woman. And then also she takes, you can see this eye is the Egyptian's eye. So by using negative and positive space and using like the X-Acto knife to carve into this Egyptian Pharaoh head, um, she can really make an interesting play and also like a really interesting visual on even just the eyes here. It makes, it makes me question as a viewer, like really, who am I looking at? There's something unnerving about that and it makes me very interested in the imagery. Um, so I think the concept is a demonstration of histor historical polarities such as the Egyptian, Egyptian Pharaoh and the woman from a beauty magazine to investigate standards of sovereignty as it relates to ideals of beauty. So obviously a Pharaoh is a sovereign um, idol or a sovereign has a sovereign position amongst the, the people that it looks after in Egypt. Um, and also the ideals of and standards of beauty might be were um, something that she questioned as a feminist um, and also as like the only female in the Dada movement, the biggest female that actually had a voice in the Dada movement, um, questioning the sovereignty of um, female beauty and how that really does have a reign amongst, um, amongst not only women, but also men in the world at that time. Um, Matt Maitland is a collage artist that I just discovered who is, um, he is, works in film. He does a lot of collage work for album covers. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, looking at this, I see this very um, contemporary fashion from the way the makeup is applied. I mean, there, there is, it feels kind of dark with the sense that the eyes are bloodshot. I don't, I think that this could be like a digital collage. Um, not sure how, what his process looks like. Um, maybe it's a digital collage where he pulls stuff off the internet. Maybe he scans 
things that he finds into a digital format and then cuts and pastes it all together. So looking at this, I mean, there's this woman talking about fashion with her, with her makeup and her, her um, being beautiful. And then also this, this monkey at the same time, which kind of has like matching makeup. <laughs> um, and then like the, this reflection of her face is skewed and it all these edges of the face kind of match the edges of the leaves so i can see that there are some like design ideas that are really consistent with like the the shape of the leaf being similar to the shape of the reflection the shape the color of the eyes matches the color of these of the monkey eyes there are just certain things that are really consistent when i think of the concept i personally don't really know. I mean, I, my first idea was perhaps nonsense, which is a concept in itself. Um, sometimes it is just looking at a conglomeration of pop imagery in general, which I think a lot of collage art does this because if you're working for magazines, you're only really working with um, what is commonly seen. Um, so that is something to consider too, as you make your collage, maybe it is about nonsense, maybe it is just about fun. Um, maybe the concept isn't super heavy, like um, John Hartfield's Adolf Hitler or Wengechi Mutu's just very individual type of style. Maybe your collage looks something like this. Um, so obviously we're looking at another political collage. There is, um, a drawn aspect. So Michael Tunk, um, this is, he made this in response to, we'll look at it again, John Hartfield's collage, this famous one um, that's very political. So Michael Tunk is creating this collage that is also political. Um, what's really cool about this is using using mass numbers of something to create a, um, a commentary. So he just collected and collected a bunch of these missiles from different magazines, I'm guessing, and drew the skeleton himself with really interesting foreshortening. As you can see, the skeleton is looking up, placing some of the missiles out of the eyes um, and thinking a lot about the gesture, the way that the figure of the skeleton is holding his own heart and looking up makes it feel like um, almost like there's some excitement looking forward to these missiles, which I think comes into play with, you know, the world is in the skeleton's hand as well as it's he, the skeleton is made up and comprised of all of these different American flags. So the concept is maybe fairly obvious in this. I think that the artist was looking at how the United States has only been at peace for 21 years in total since its discovery, um, as well as a sadding, saddening and dystopic look at technological warfare. Um, so just talking about, Michael Tunk is talking about technological warfare um, and how unfortunately it's been something that um, the United States has um, prided itself on and um, kind of like maybe coming from a place of maybe just does the desire of being a part of a more peaceful world. Um, Joseph Cornell is a really famous collage and assemblage artist. He's really famous for these shadow boxes. Um, and so we're only making collages of 2D work right now, but I thought I would show you his work is really interesting. He called these boxes shadow boxes. And so he would take, this is a 2D image that he found of a parakeet or a pair. Yeah, I think a parakeet. And he would um, create little blocks so that you can see that there's a shadow behind this piece of paper. That's why it's called a shadow box because things aren't glued directly onto one another, but they are existing in this kind of still a flat plane, but it is a three-dimensional space where um, objects that he found, two-dimensional objects as well as sometimes three-dimensional objects 
were placed in front and behind one another, kind of like a children's pop-up book. Um, so collage versus assemblage. Collage uses 2D materials and is remains fairly flat. Um, you, of course, you can incorporate texture and we're gonna be doing a collage, but I just wanted to have this small conversation, the sidebar conversation about the collage versus assemblage. And so assemblage, as we look at um, Joseph Cornell's work, is uses both two-dimensional and three-dimensional materials. Um, so the concept of Joseph Cornell's little parakeet box here, the concept is, I think, really just taking a closer look at nature and enjoying a moment to enjoy the beauty of it. Um, your concept doesn't always have to have a huge impactful message. It can be something rather lighthearted and um, really poetic as well. I think this artist, Erica Iris Simmons, is a wonderful artist to look at for um, this class as a, as a design class because um, it is very minimal and it's really effective. And um, I think that that sort of using that minimal effectiveness, this type of design, not only the fact that it's Michael Jackson, because everybody around the world knows who Michael Jackson is. It just is so effective because everyone can really see the concept that Erica Iris Simmons is working with in this piece. Um, so yeah, there's a cassette tape where she pulls out the tape, the tape, that black stuff, and she uses it to, um, to really precisely create the different lines and widths, the weighted lines of uh, Michael Jackson's face, and then just using the frilliness, the froofiness of the, the tape to create um, this curly haired effect. Um, another example, which I think is so great for this design class because it is so minimal and is so effective is like, this is Bob Marley. Maybe I think Michael Jackson is more famous around the world than Bob Marley, but Bob Marley is still super famous person, musician. And so she found a cassette tape and did the same thing, use the line of the cassette tape to create these just kind of fun, curly, abstract way for her eyes to go up into this really controlled um, design of Bob Marley's face and his hair and um, using the tape to also kind of create these sort of dread-like textures. They almost kind of look like braids. I just think it's really super simplistic and really genius. And then on top of that, instead of just using a white cassette tape, um, Erica Iris Simmons, sort of spray paints it to be um, the colors that are um, always associated with um, like reggae, which is red, yellow, and green. Um, so our re reggae music, as well as like the Rastafarian culture, red, yellow, and green. So I thought that that was just like a really simple touch that makes this design just like so much stronger and um, just well-rounded. So the concept, she, Simmons and the last two images that we looked at is using, to use your materials to directly create concise commentary with the visuals you are creating can create a solid message. In this case, a concept revolving around the celebration of music, musical artists and the novelty of the cassette tape is what Erica Iris Simmons is doing with these two images. And then the last one I have for to share for you is Jane Perkins. Um, this I just thought this image was really kind of comical. I mean, the, here, so here's um, the artist is working with another icon and um, they are, it's really just finding a whole bunch of random buttons and pearls and like Mardi Gras beads and um, using understanding and color to create the dimensions of the face, like the lines of the chin and the smile lines, um, as well as using the black buttons and pearls to create a contrast against the lighter amount of pearls and buttons that Jane Perkins accumulated and then glued down. 
Um, so the concept is just recycling domestic items such as pearls, buttons, different things that you would add onto a fabric um, and using the different values of these objects as far as color and hue goes to recreate the illusion of a pop icon such as the Queen of England. So that's, um, that is it for this talk. I hope that any of these were inspiring to you. You don't have to create you know, a face or a figure for your collage. Um, it can look like a horizon, it can be a landscape. Um, I know that a lot of these are faces and figures. Um, so that is really up to you. It can be a landscape, it can be just a mood or a feeling. Um, that is free, free roam for you. All right, thank you. <laughs>